Good morning, Todd Dunn here on April 21st, 2018. This morning I'd like to talk a little bit about doing your own white count. At least the method I use. Why do your own? Well, in my case, I'm going through treatment for chronic lymphocytic leukemia right now. And my doctor is a little bit conservative from my point of view as to doing blood tests. In other words, he doesn't do as many blood tests as I would like him to. So I have developed my own method to get pretty good estimates of my blood counts. The procedure is pretty simple. It starts by making a blood smear either immediately before or immediately after I have blood drawn for a standard hospital blood test. The results of the hospital blood test give me a reference to use. And what I do is I make a blood smear and using my microscope with the digital camera attached, I take a number of pictures of what's called the monolayer in the blood smear. Okay, this is what the monolayer looks like in a good area where the cells are almost touching each other and there may be one or two overlaps, but there aren't many. Most of the cells you see are red blood cells. In this field of view, there are a number of white cells, which are the ones that are, have the bluish stained nuclear material. Okay, here's a spot where there are too many red blood cells. You notice they're overlapping and piled up a little bit. That is an area you don't want to count. And here is an area of the blood smear without enough red blood cells. You don't want to count here either. So we'll go back. Here's a spot in the monolayer that has an appropriate number of red blood cells. Their spacing is uniform and we can take a picture of this. I usually take my pictures at 100 magnification. That's the 10x objective lens and the additional magnification that the camera provides. That gives me a reasonable sample in terms of total area and a reasonable number of white cells per field of view. That will vary depending on your microscope and camera setup, but you have to pick what's appropriate for you to get a reasonable image to count white cells in. So what I do is I go through my blood smear and I take pictures of the cells in the monolayer. And right now my white count is very low. Uh, it was 1.5 at my last blood test. So I take a lot of pictures, typically on the order of 250. And then I go back through the pictures and I count white blood cells to find out how many white blood cells there were in the total number of pictures that I took. Okay, how many fields of view you're gonna to need to photograph and count white cells in depends on two things. Your total white count. If you have a relatively high total white count, you'll get lots of white cells in each field of view and you won't have to count as many uh, fields of view to get a statistically meaningful uh, number of white cells. And also how uniform your blood smear is. Now my blood smears are far from perfect and there's a fair amount of uh, non-uniformity in my blood smears from spot to spot, even in the monolayer. So in order to get a representative sample, I count a lot of fields of view. If I had a higher white count, say 50,000, and a relatively uniform uh, number of white cells per field of view, instead of counting 250 uh, pictures, I might only count 25 or 30 because I would get quite a large number of white cells in 25 or 30 fields of view and get a good estimate of the average number of white cells per field of view, which is the number I use to calculate my white count. Once I've counted the white blood cells, I usually go back and do a fairly careful differential count where I look through the slide on high power uh, of my microscope and I identify the white blood cells and I count a couple of hundred white blood cells to get a good differential with reasonable accuracy. I also note any morphological characteristics that are out of the normal for my white blood cells. 
Once I have a differential and a total number of white blood cells for some number of pictures, I calculate the average number of white blood cells per field of view. And I do that for my blood smear that was taken very close in time to a sample that the hospital ran. And that gives me a reference. And what I do to calculate my reference number is I take the total white count determined by the hospital for my last test, 1.5, and I divide that by the average number of white blood cells per field of view in my blood smear. So that gives me my reference number. That gives me total white blood cells divided by white blood cells per field of view. After I've done that, I'm ready to calculate my white count at some later time. So let's say a week later I decide to see where my white blood count is. What I do is make a blood smear, I go through and take pictures of the monolayer again. Once I've taken all my pictures, I go back and I look at them on my computer and I count how many white blood cells there were. And I determine the average number of white blood cells per field of view. Once I have that number, I multiply it by my reference number, which was the white count determined by the hospital divided by the average number of white blood cells per field of view in the reference blood smear that I made very close in time to when the hospital took the sample. Doing the multiplication of my reference number times the average number of white blood cells in the sample at the current time gives me a good estimate of the white blood count in the sample at the current time. And then by going back and doing a differential, I can calculate the proportions of the white blood cells that I'm interested in, normally lymphocytes and neutrophils. So that's how I do it. So far, I've found that my estimates for total white count are right on. And I haven't had any significant differences between my estimates of total white count and the hospital's lab tests. So I'm pretty confident that I'm getting the right total white count. There are some differences between my differentials and the automated differentials that the hospital does. In my latest blood test, for example, I estimated that my neutrophil count was 0.8 and my lymphocyte count was 0.7 for a total white count of 1.5. The hospital blood test came out with a total white count of 1.5 as well, but they had my neutrophils at 1.1 and my lymphocytes at 0.4. I think, based on my looking at the cell morphology when I did my differential, that that's because I have quite a few immature lymphocytes. Immature lymphocytes are large cells with a relatively small volume of nuclear material compared to a mature lymphocyte, which is a small cell about the same size as a red blood cell. I think that the hospital's instrument is inappropriately identifying immature lymphocytes as neutrophils, since the technique that's used to determine neutrophils is light scattering, which gives you an indication of the size of the cell and the proportion of nuclear material. So an immature lymphocyte, apparently from my perspective, looks a lot like a neutrophil. So I think that the hospital's test is actually over-reporting my neutrophil count and under-reporting my lymphocyte count. But the doctor believes the hospital tests, not me. So what can I say? Anyway, that's how I do it. It's pretty simple. It takes me about two hours from the time I poke my finger with a, an X-Acto knife to get a drop of blood to having an estimate of my blood count. But it gives me a good idea of what's going on so that I know whether or not I should call up the hospital and say, hey, I think I need to have a new blood test. I've done that once already where we were scheduled to have an infusion of obinutuzumab, but the doctor had not asked for blood tests. I thought my white count was sufficiently low that we should have an additional test and possibly postpone the infusion. Well, 
after I told the nurses what I thought was going on, they contacted the doctor and apparently convinced him that we should do a blood test. We did. The numbers came out right on what I thought was going on, and the doctor postponed my infusion. Had we gone with what he initially planned to do, I would have gone ahead with an infusion, which potentially could have put me at risk for extremely low neutrophil counts. As it was, I got into grade four neutropenia anyway, but it didn't last long because I hadn't had an additional infusion to further suppress my white counts. So it's worth doing. The gadgetry you need to do it is some glass slides and some way of puncturing yourself to get a drop of blood. The chemicals to make the blood smear, which is some methanol and some blood stain. You can get both of those through Amazon. And a microscope, in my case, with a camera to do the actual counts. Procedure's pretty simple. And so far, it seems to be, at least in terms of total white count, to be quite accurate. Anyway, that's what I've been doing with myself lately. I apologize for not making too many videos. I am going through chemoimmunotherapy right now, and frankly, I've been a little under the weather and haven't really felt like making videos. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already done it, please subscribe to my channel. Yeah. I hope that I'll be able to make more informative videos about this and a lot of other topics in the upcoming days. Thanks again for watching.